Okay guys, so hi and welcome to my first tutorial for the micro bit. Um, we're going to be doing a tutorial in Python today um, and we're going to be coming up with a bit of a trail following game that I've come up with a concept for. Um, so before we get started, let's just have a little bit of a discussion about the micro bit and about the game that we're going to be building today. So here's the basic layout of what a micro bit looks like on the front. So you've got a um, grid of LEDs, 5x5 five five here. Um, you can actually turn these LEDs all on, you can um, specify which ones you want on using different function calls. So there's a call such as display dot set pixel, which will take an X, a Y and either a boolean or an integer value. So a boolean will either turn it on or off, um, an integer value will give it different intensities. So if I said display dot set pixel zero zero would be referencing this one with nine, then it would give it a full intensity. Um, light and if I gave it a value of zero zero one um, as the parameters then it would give it a very low level intensity light so um, we have two buttons on the front as well we've got an A and a B button uh, these can be referenced with a um, check of either how many times it has been pressed since it was last called the function so you've got a function which says number of times it's been pressed um, the one we're going to be using today is just to check whether since the last time we updated if one of these has been pressed and if so then we'll do something um, in the main loop that will uh, uh, that will um, respond to that so here's the game that we're going to be building today so there's going to be a start point and there's going to be an end point and those are just going to be zero zero and four four and the idea is uh, we're going to write an algorithm uh, that's going to have uh, a trail it's going to create a trail uh, from the start point down to the finish point. Um, so we're going to have um, a choice here, either right or down. So if it chooses down, then it'll go to the right. Uh, if it chooses down, it'll go down. If it chooses right, it'll go to the right. Then the same choice again, right or down, 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 until you've reached this point. And then what the idea is going to be is that once you have created um, that list, so that's going to be a list of stored points. So the first point will be zero, zero, then one, zero, then one, one, and then um, one, two, and then two, two, or whatever going on like that. Um, you will be able to display it to the user either as a full trail like that, or as one at a time flashing lights. So you would show them that one, and then that one, and then that one, and then that one. And now what the idea for the game um, concept is actually going to be, once you've shown them the trail, you'll show them it for a certain number of seconds, they'll have to try and then remember that. Um, and if they are able to remember uh, where it went by pressing the B from the start point, they will be able to press B to go right or down to go left. Uh, or, sorry, B to go right or A to go down. So if they press B, it'll go to the right. If they press A, it'll go down. And then we will have a check just to see if the pixel that they're on matches where they currently should be. Now, if you count um, on this grid using that method, any distance from here to here is going to be using rights and downs. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it's always going to be nine points that we hit. So here's our first point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they're going to have to press eight times to get through the trail. If we do the same again, but going a different route, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No matter what you do, it's always going to be eight button presses and including nine of these different pixels. Um, so I suppose uh, I've written up a bit of a plan for this. Um, I'm just going to get started coding it now and I'll take you guys along as we go. So uh, we're just going to go into our editor, create a new Python script. Um, this will all run straight away. This will just, just scroll the text hello world right across. Um, we don't actually want any of this information in, so we're just going to get rid of that. Uh, I'll probably keep the uh, loop in, but I'm going to reduce the time down. So that's 2,000 milliseconds. So at the minute, the loop will run once every... Two, uh, two seconds, now it's going to run once every half a second, but we don't need to worry about that yet. What we're going to do first is start by just setting up our very basic uh, version of this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to um, create a 
list of lists. Now what that means is we are going to have a list of these points and each individual point will have to have an X and a Y. So we will have an X and a Y in each element in the list. Now it sounds pretty confusing um, but once you start seeing how this is getting written you'll uh, you'll probably pick it up quite fast. Um, so this is a list of lists to hold our trail information and uh, we would be we are gonna actually write a function which is going to generate this trail for us uh, but for now we're just gonna we're just gonna create it manually so create a new variable trail and it's going to be of type list so what this means is that is actually a list so we can put multiple objects in it for example I could put a one a zero and a three and then if you're using normal Python you would then be able to say print trail zero and what that would do is that would look at this object here which is the zeroth element in the list the first element would be this one because Python is a zero indexed array language now what we're going to actually be doing is using a list of lists so inside of your list you're going to be creating multiple versions of the lists and in each of them we're then going to have our points so let's create a trail this first time so we're going to have the let's just go from here all the way right and all the way down so we're going to need zero zero then we're going to need one zero so that's this one here because we look along the x first uh, then we're going to have two zero three zero and finally we'll have four zero on the x now that we've got that uh, we're going to have to start working down so I'm just going to copy and paste this uh, so we're going to have four one Four two, four three, and four four. Okay. Now, this is all going to look pretty complicated at the minute, but uh, it's all going to make sense in a second when we actually get these printed out on the screen. Um, and then I'll take a, a video of what the micro bit actually does when we run this code. Um, so now um, we're going to define a function. Um, and the purpose of this function is going to be whenever we call it, it's going to print out everything onto our micro bit. So it's going to take each of these elements in trail and it will print all of them on the screen. That's so a very simple version of this function. So the way we define a function is just using our def. Um, tag, I think it's called a tag, I don't actually know Python syntax that well, but I believe this is a, a tag, you can also have a class tag um, and other ones as well, but for now we're going to just be defining a function, we're going to call it, um, let's say, print trail. Uh, it's good in Python syntax, uh, a lot of Java syntax will use uh, things that look like that, uh, where you sort of start in each bit of a word with a capital letter, uh, Python actually uh, uses just an underscores and has all sort of lower cases so you'll be able to uh, get used to the Python way of doing things. Um, now what we're going to want to do in this is we're going to create a loop, a for loop actually that's going to look at each of these individually and is going to it's going to switch those pixels on. So create a loop to switch each individual pixel on. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to create, say, for. So uh, a for loop will say for every element in this list or for every element in this group. So for i in range 0 to the length of trail. Now what this length function does here, len, um, it actually sees how many elements are in here. So what this function is going to do is it's going to create a new variable called i and set its value to zero um, and then it's going to run whatever code is here and once it's run that it's going to come back round i is going to get one added to it and i will become one and then we'll run this again then i will become two then three then four then five then six then seven and then eight now since the length of trail um, is actually nine elements we're going to run up to the number 8 because we'll run up to 1 less than 8. Uh, the check for this, um, so Java syntax it makes a little bit more sense. 
So for in Java, it'd look like for int, which is an integer, um, i set to zero. If i is less than um, the length of trail, uh, then we will set i equal to i plus one. So that's how you do it in Java. And basically, Python works the same way. It just isn't written um, as succinctly. So what this says in Java is we're creating a new variable i. We're running this code. Um, if i is less than, well, in this case, the length of trail is nine. So if i is less than trail, then run this code. Then add one to i and check if i is less than the length of trail. i is one, less than nine. I, then when i is 2, it's still less than 9 until it's equal to 8. If it's 8, it's still less than 9, so we'll run the code. We'll add 1 to 8, and it'll become equal to 9. Then we'll say, is 9 less than the length of trail? Well, no, it isn't actually. So we're going to stop running the code, and we're going to move on to our next block of execution. Um, so here, I've created a variable which is going to increment in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And what that will allow me to do is... If, when I'm printing the trail, the first thing I'm going to want to do is clear all pixels off of the display. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to take all the pixels that are currently turned on, and it's just going to turn them off. So we do that by calling our display.clear function. Um, it does what it says in the tin, basically nothing complicated about it. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is actually turn each of our pixels on one at a time. Um, so, for um, for each pixel, turn it on. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to say display. Well, uh, what we'll do first is is we'll um, set some variables up. So we'll say our current x value um, is going to be equal to trail i. So what this is going to do is this trail i when i equals zero will return this list here which means because I've got a list, I can then call the zero element, which would be this one, or this one, or this one, depending on our current value of i. So we're going to store our x value here into a new variable called x. And we're going to store our y into a new variable for the ith um, element in the list. And we're going to take the first one, which will reference this, this, and this all the way along. So now we've got a way of storing our individual pixel information. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to come back up to the top um, and I'm going to create a uh, variable that's going to hold the intensity of our pixels. Now all this mean, all that this does here is say you create a game um, and all of your, uh, in each one of these individual functions, you say, uh, every time you call it, you say, I want to set the pixel to a brightness of nine. And then you decide, oh, actually, I want them all to be five. You have to go through and individually change them all to five. If you have a variable called intensity that you call every time that you're actually printing a pixel to the screen, then you can just change this value and it will change all of those individual values in the code as well. So now we're going to use the display.setPixel function. So this calls setPixel on the display object, uh, which is all imported automatically for us. Um, using this micro bit import, we can access everything that we need to. Um, and we're going to set our pixel x, y, and we're going to give it an intensity of intensity, right? Now, all, that that, all of that has been set up. Um, so when we call uh, our print trail uh, function now, um, it should just print out whatever this trail looks like here. Um, so we're going to run that in a second, but firstly, let's just talk about program scope. So um, this function here, what we've actually done is we've declared a function, um, and this isn't run. This this is just declared, and it says, what this lets us do is, is run this function over and over. Um, so basically, when I run my program for the first time, it will say, right, I'm going to run this bit of code. So from microbit. I'm going to import everything. This star just means everything. So here we're importing all of the code we need to use microbit. 
all that micro bit specific stuff which is this display and all of our images and things that we can also use. Then it's creating a new variable called trail. Trail has a type of list and the elements that go in the list are all individual lists and there's nine of them and the code just runs that and, and it all goes swimmingly. Then it's going to create a new variable intensity and it's going to set its value to nine and then when we get to here it's actually just going to just going to kind of skip this. None of this code gets run, it just knows that the code is there. And then when we want to run this code, we actually have to call the function. So you see here, we're calling a function call here to display to clear it. Now inside of my game loop, I'm actually going to um, call the function that will print out the trail. So by calling this in our execution, what's happening is we're going from here, we're skipping over this and we're going to here. We're entering into a loop um, and this, what this while true loop actually does is a while loop will wait for a condition to be true. So for example, um, you could have a while loop that looked like this. So I could say x equals zero um, while x is less than 10, I want to add um, one to x, okay? Uh, now, instead of writing this, I'm actually going to say instead of x equals x plus 1, I'm just going to say x plus equals 1, which does the exact same thing. Um, so I'm adding 1 to x. What this loop will do is it will say while x is less than 10, well, x is currently 0, 0 is less than 10. So I'm going to enter and I'm going to run the code and x is now 1. Um, 1 is less than 10, 2, 3, 4. And then when this condition is met, uh, isn't met anymore, should I say? So while this, when this condition shows as false, then we'll break out of the loop and we'll continue our execution down to the next line. So this this bit of code here, this while false, will never actually go into because this condition here has to be true for it to be entered into. Now this is a while true loop is known as an infinite loop. This is going to run forever and ever until we do something specific to break out of it. Here we're not going to do anything specific to break out of it. We're just going to run it over and over and over forever until we run out of battery or the micro bit gets plugged, unplugged or whatever. So we're saying while true, let's print the trail. So we're going to run all of this code here and then we're going to sleep for half a second. And then we're going to come back around and we're going to do the same thing again. And we're going to sleep for half a second. And that's going to get run over and over and over. Um, now, I've not talked any about how you actually... Uh, get code to run on uh, the uh, micro bit, but the way that you get code to run on the micro bit is uh, you just download it. So let's call this trail game. And what we're going to do is just click on download and you can see I've downloaded the trail game there. And now let's wham over to my downloads. And all I'm going to do is I've got my micro bit plugged in. You can see here my micro bit's plugged in. I'm just going to drag this over to the micro bit. And I'm hoping that when this comes on, we will actually have, yep, I'm just going to take a picture of it now. Coming up on your screen just now. So as you can probably see from the screenshot, um, we're actually running out of charge on my laptop right now so what we're going to do is we'll probably leave today's there um, I hope that you've enjoyed the tutorial um, I hope that you feel you've learned something it's been a bit slow as we've been explaining what all these individual things do but uh, we're going to be building up and we're going to have a fully built game in Python for our micro bit in no time at all um, so just I'm going to put over here somewhere a link to the next video so please just go and give it a look um, maybe watch this over again if you weren't sure about something and don't be afraid to send me a message in the comments if you want to ask any questions. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.